Gang, 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 gang. What is going on? Shit, wrong intro. Cut. G'day, g'day, everyone. What is going on? Is your favorite producer from Down Under, Jin, back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make an ambient inspired beat for someone such as 21 Savage or Nardo Wick. But yeah, if you are new here, would really appreciate it if you punch that subscribe button and also flick that little notification bell to get notified every single time I upload a video. That being said, let's get into FL Studio and let's deconstruct this beat. Okay, so here we are in FL Studio and to begin with, when I make a dark ambient beat, I like to figure out what my foundation is. Now, the foundation for this one is actually a guitar from Contact. It is the Isla FMOV LP electric guitar. I can highly recommend this and the melody that we are playing is something really really simple it's just two chords f sharp minor going into c sharp the only thing that i did was with this a5 here that's repeating throughout the whole melody i pitched that up an octave you know this is what an f sharp minor chord would look like pitch that one up and then i went by ear for the rest of it now i'm not really that good when it comes to music theory but what i do know when it comes to producing a dark beat is with this d and C sharp, you wanna work with that one note interval right there, cause that builds tension, that builds suspense, and it's one of the easiest way to get that dark sinister feel as well. So in context, this is what the guitar sounds like. You know, something really simple, and that's just repeating for the next four bars as well. It's just something so simple that can be easily built on. I don't want to, you know, go over complicated with the foundation because if I did that, there wouldn't be enough room for other elements to come in. Speaking of other elements, the next thing that we have is yet again from Contact. It is the Neo Pure Piano using the Dark preset. That one's just practically playing the bass notes. This is what the piano sounds like. As you can hear, you know, it's just really filtered out with the EQ. Going on to the next part, it's from Contact yet again. It's the free ethnic flute phrases. And in Context, it's just playing one note. And that one note is so. With the effects that we threw on that, you know, it kind of makes it feel like it's in the background, kind of sounding like a bit of a whale call, which I thought was perfect for this beat. Going on to the next element is from Contact yet again. It's Falcon Ethnic Orchestra, Duduk Alto. And it's just playing two notes, an A5 and a C sharp. Practically, this A and C sharp is being repeated for the next part. The only difference is this C sharp right here is just down an octave, just making it sound a little bit different so it's not repetitive over and over and over again. Simple changes like that can actually make it sound like the beat is progressing and it doesn't get boring for the listener or the artist as well. And in context, sounds like so. You know, really simple, but really catchy. The next thing from Contact Dead again is Balkan Ethnic Orchestra, Macedonian Kamane. I'm more than likely butchering that name, but uh, in context, just sounds like so. Basically sounds like it's calling out to someone, you know, with this beat, majority of it is using the good old technique of call and response or question and answer, where you have one sound playing one thing, and then another sound coming in with the response. Going on to the final element is yet again from Contact, Falcon Ethnic Orchestra, Godoka, Ensemble, Legs and Groove. Just playing one note yet again, and it sounds like so. Kind of sounds a bit metallic, but with the effects that we put on, pushes it in the background. Speaking of effects, let's get into that. With all of these contacts right here, we have no effects on them until we get to the instrument bus, where we have a Valhalla Vintage Verb with a mix of 30, and a low cut of 150 just to make sure that reverb wouldn't be playing on the bass parts. A fruity chorus with the CE chorus preset, 60% with the wet dry over here. A shaper box, which all we have on this one is the drive function. I'm actually going to reapply it right now. We have the drive going over to this ramp right here, but all we did was just drag it down to about here and put the mix on 30%. That's all we did with that one. We didn't change anything else. Going on to the next part, we have a sound shifter with the semitones down three, which ends up putting it on D sharp. The next thing that we have is retrograde from Simon Savita, just with the mix on 40%, just to make the whole melody sound a little bit more full and a little bit more dynamic as well in the whole mix. 
If you want to grab that one, I did make a video a couple of weeks ago where I gave a full in-depth review, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I will be leaving a card above me as well if you want to watch that one. RC20 Retro Color with the preset Vinyl 3. Practically all I changed was the distort, flicked it over to air, wobble I've put on stereo, and I changed the noise over to 7.5 inch. Going on to the Fab Filter, EQ, practically a 50 hertz cut and a 20,000 kilohertz cut. Just so you know, get rid of the really high end and the low end so it would have room for the 808 to breathe. They have an effect rack which is automated throughout the beat with an Echo Boy and a Micro Shift. Same with the Cymatics Origin. This one is automated throughout the beat as well. And then last but not least, we have an Arvox Stereo just dealing with the dynamics, making sure there's no uncontrollable peaks. Going on to the drums, we start with this 808 from the Tri-Freeze drum kit. It's the favorite 808 playing a really simple pattern that sounds like so. Really simple, not complicated at all. I just wanted, you know, the 808 to be able to punch through the mix really hard, get sound really clean. Going on to the clap, we have the tri-free short clap, just playing your typical trap pattern, which is the three and seven. You know, really simple high, really simple clap, sorry. Not overcomplicated. Going on to the hi-hats though, which is uh, what I said when I stuffed up not that long ago. I was jumping the gun. This is a MIDI from the Rio Labor 20K drum kit from Internet Money Wave Supply. I really recommend it. It is a free drum kit as well. And it actually fit this beat really bloody well. In context, it sounds like so. You know, it's just really simple, yet kind of just builds a little bit more character to the beat as well, makes it more bouncy. Speaking of bouncy, let's get into the perks, which actually give it a lot of bounce. We have this Woo perk coming from the Tri-Freeze drum kit yet again. Just kind of making it more bouncy. We have this open hat, Tri-Freeze drum kit. Who would have thought the lab's open hat? That plays every now and then with the kick, but every now and then we do have an open hat that doesn't play at the exact same time as the kick. We do have this snare from the Tri-Freeze drum kit, this smoke snare. Really simple, just adding more bounce to it. Then with the kick, we have the Wheezy Out of Here kick from the Wheezy Shows the, sc uh, Wheezy shows the Screen, and in context, sounds like so. Really simple, but adds a decent amount of bounce. Going on to the effects with this, we have obviously the producer tag, which is the Chucky laugh. <laughs> Basic riser from the Cody Reddit drum kit, which goes into the Samurai effects from the Prod by HC, which is the exact same sound effect that I use for my transitions in my videos, by the way. Other than that, we have this gun cockback sound, this gunshot, those two come from the Suicide Boys drum kit, so it does this crash. And the other thing that we have is this storm sound effect that is in every single last one of my baits. Going on to the automation, like I said, the only things that we've automated is the effect rack and Cymatics Origin, just to make it sound like the melody is changing, because if you have the exact same thing playing over and over, it's going to get boring. Artists wouldn't want to, you know, jump on the beat. So just by changing up the effects, changing the automation, turning it on and off, it's just constantly making it feel that the beat is evolving and changing. Other than that, the other things that we have is a tape stop that is turning on right before the second hook. And we do have a reverb and a master volume automation. Reverb is turning on at the end just to kind of wash out the melody. And then the master volume is just turning off the volume at the end. But yeah, that is practically how I made the beat personality, which is yet again a 21 Savage and a Nardo Wick inspired beat. If you do want to listen to the full thing, I'll be leaving a card above me and a link in the description to my second channel, which is the beat channel. Would really appreciate it if you go over there and subscribe. Speaking of subscribing, would really appreciate if you are new here, if you punch that subscribe button and click that little notification bell so you get notified every single time I upload a video. But yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all next week for a regular video.